Hey guys, we are back with another video, but we are still talking about reptiles. So we have Loki, he is our crested gecko. And then we have not named this young lady over here, but we also have a green and old. Um, so I'm gonna talk about those two species more specifically a little bit later. But first of all, I just wanna kind of touch on the group as a whole, so lizards as a whole. So lizards are reptiles, or like all reptile species actually. That does mean that they are ectotherms, meaning they have to get their heat from an external source. So you might see lizards basking in the sun and that's just because they're trying to warm up. Also being reptiles, many of them also lay eggs. Um, some of them do give live birth, but a majority of them lay eggs. So as far as the diet is concerned with lizards, most of them are gonna be omnivores or insectivores, um, meaning they're gonna prey on insects like flies, um, but also they are meat eaters. So they could prey on other lizards depending on the type of species that we're talking about. So lizards are actually very closely related to snakes. And just like snakes, lizards can also get a better sense of direction by smelling with their tongue. So we know that snakes will stick their tongues out and stick it into the roof of their mouth into what's called the Jacobson organ. And lizards will also do that. So they do have nostrils, but they can also get a better sense of smell with their uh, That kind of wraps up the characteristics of lizards as a whole. And now I kind of want to get more specific because what we have here on the table is we have a green anole and then we have a gecko. And so they are two different type of lizards that fall under that lizard umbrella, but I kind of want to break them down individually so you can see some differences between them. All right, yeah. guys. So we're going to start out with the green anole. So just by looking at that face, <laughs> so cute. The first difference that you're going to, or I haven't compared the two yet, but the first thing you're going to notice is those eyes. So the really cool thing about the green anole is it can move those eyes independent of one, one another mm -hmm. and it has eyelids. So that's one of the biggest difference between uh, geckos and anoles. Of course, there are exceptions um, and everything, but those are the main differences. Like a gecko is n normally not going to have eyelids. So the green anole is the only anole species that is actually native to Florida. Um, so for those of you who are, who are living in Florida right now, you probably don't see these guys as much as we would have saw them uh, many, many years ago. And the reason why is because you're probably seeing the Cuban brown anoles more often. And they are actually competing with the native species. Um, so they are from Cuba, as I've already said. They were either brought over here accidentally through potted plants or just hopped a ride on ships or whatever the case may be. So now they're here and they're thriving. And the reason why they're competing with the native green anole is because they eat the same type of food. Um, they occupy the same niche, so to speak. And so what happens is the Cuban, uh, brown, the brown Cuban anoles lay their eggs in close proximity to the green anoles, but the Cuban anoles hatch first. Um, and then oh. those babies can prey on the eggs of the green anoles. Oh, so that's wow. ca causing the decline. But also uh, it's been noticed that since the Cuban anoles have came over, uh, the green anoles are actually starting to go higher up into the trees. And so they're starting to kind of change and evolve their niche. Um, and so they're starting to go more arboreal and then the Cubans are more so uh, ground dwelling. Mm. So it, so I, I don't think scientists have actually been able to pinpoint whether or not their numbers are actually declining or they're just occupying a different niche and we're just seeing them less frequently. Um, so the green anole is gonna have more of a pointed snout and then the, the brown anole is gonna have a rounder shaped face. And it's gonna be very obvious if you see them next to each other. So just like the alligator and the crocodile, yeah, uh, they have that kind of difference. That yeah. you can spot the difference by the shape of their in snout. The head. Yep, and, and, and the patterns and the, and the colorations are slightly different as well. But if you're looking at it real quick glance, that, that that head shape is a dead giveaway. So we've talked about a lot of reptiles where the male, the females are usually the larger in the species, but actually with the green anoles, the males are gonna be larger and they're gonna have the, the dewlap and that is kind of like the the reddish orangish skin flap that comes um, right under the chin and they use it as a way to uh, attract females during mating season. Also, um, they are very territorial, so they can use it to kind of it's a warning away. sign. Yeah. It's a neon warning sign. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a means of dominance as well. Because mm. most children in Florida have seen that flap, that dewlap yeah. coming off the lizard's so neck and wondering that, why they're doing that. If you see that, that is definitely a male. Okay. That is definitely. And the Cuban uh, anoles also have that flap as well. <laughs> so I get to hold a crested gecko. <laughs> yeah. 
is so chill. Really amazingly soft, like you would not expect. Um, they have kind of like these crests on their head. Oh. Um, they also call them eyelash gecko in like a pet's mark or something. And obviously because you can see yep. um, their crest on their eyelashes kind of look like eyelashes. <laughs> Here. Another common characteristic that both of these guys can do is actually, in a way, change colors. So there are what are considered true chameleons, and those are what the, you know, the lizards that we think of that can blend into their environment very well. Um, they have really bright colorations, and those guys are uh, native to Africa, and those are considered like true chameleons. We have a hundred of those true chameleon species. But then other lizards that can kind of change color, um, but they're not doing it for the same reasons, um, aren't considered true chameleons, but they can still change colors. So what we call it is firing up and firing down. Um, so he's he, he can be in a state where he seems more muted with his colors, um, and then his colors can seem more vibrant. Um, right now, he's kind of in between, because um, sometimes he can look really pale, but right now he's giving us very dark um, colorations. Sometimes he looks a little bit red, and then sometimes he just looks as pale as this table. Now, with the green and old, they can actually change colors and they can be as bright green as she already is right now. And they can also turn a, a dusty brown, yellow type of color. Um, and as far as what causes these guys to change color, it could be um, a combination of like humidity, temperature, mood. Um, there's no one thing that can contribute Even to a mood. color change. Yeah. They get excited, they get angry, they or, get exactly, fearful. Exactly, it can be a response to uh, some type of stimulus, honestly. Your lizards, so unlike snakes, most of your lizards are gonna molt in pieces. Um, there is one lizard called the alligator lizard that will shed or molt um, in one complete skin shed, mm. I guess is how you would say that. Um, so they'll shed in one piece. But most of your lizards are gonna shed um, in pieces and they actually eat their shed for protein and honestly, Immediately, yeah, like they yeah. eat it as yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah, but also if you think about it, it could also be a means of covering their tracks. So if they're in the wild and they're oh. shedding in pieces, if something is hunting them down, you know what I mean? There's no evidence. Yeah, exactly. Peace out.